What's interesting about my story, and I think it's it's actually a common thing, but just a lot of people don't maybe talk about it, is how how you can still be involved in church and still have a spiritual life and still believe in God and still have this this aspect of you that's deeply Catholic, and yet you're falling further and further into patterns of sin, uh, habitual sin, mortal sin, and that sort of uh-huh. thing. And um, it's weird because I, I think for a lot of people, at least for me, it was easy to compartmentalize my faith and to say, okay, this is me on Sunday. This is me at youth group. This mm-hmm. is me, you know, okay, I'm, I'm in junior high and I'm going to our youth group thing on Sundays and maybe some retreats here and there or, or lock-ins is what was really big back then. Uh-huh. Uh, I would go to those things but then it's like, okay, but then I'm going to go home and I'm going to have these vices or these sins or these other things that I'm struggling with. And I could kind of separate the two and be like, this is me with my friends and this is me at church. And that took like a lifetime. And I think it's something that even still I have to really figure out what does it look like to allow my faith to transcend, to, to, to take such a deep root in my heart uh-huh. that every aspect of my life is affected by it. That there's no longer this like me on Sundays and then me, you know, at parties on the weekend or me with these friends or me with those friends. And uh, and that's a tough thing. So definitely when I was younger, that was something that like I could already see was starting to happen. But at the, you know, when you're in, in junior high, you don't think anything about it. It's just yeah. like, whatever, this is who I am with these friends and this is who I am with these friends. And, uh, and this is who I am at my church with my church friends. I didn't think much about it. Now, Tony— Castillo from San Faustina, he Mm -hmm. came on the show and he talked about that, about, you know, he was singing at church, but then his personal life behind the scenes was just going, falling deeper and deeper. Is that what happened to you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I started to struggle when I was about 12 or 13, I, I started, I started cutting myself and it was just this, this deep desire to figure out who I was but more the the bigger question was what am i worth like do i do i matter do people care i really struggled in middle school i feel like to make friends so physically cutting yourself physically cutting so self harm um that's kind of started about that age and about that same time i discovered pornography and um here came something that at first seemed like oh well this is no big deal I'm not hurting anyone uh-huh. but as many people know today it is extremely addictive. And so that began that addiction as well. Uh And I could tell that things weren't okay. Like I knew pornography was wrong and I knew Uh I shouldn't be cutting myself. But once I started down that path, it, it didn't seem like there was any other option because I'm like, well, what's the alternative for me to go to school every day and and feel like a loser for me to like feel terrible about my, my body image. And like, I'd rather numb and I'd rather do these other things so then at least I don't feel so terrible. Where did you, how did you cut yourself? Like it was. Well, so like, like on the wrists and stuff like that was uh-huh. kind of where it started. Okay. Um, the, the thing with that though, and, and I quickly learned because I actually had these friends who went and told the counselor because when you're cutting yourself in a visible place like that, like yes. you can't wear a hoodie every day in Texas in the summer, you know, uh-huh. like yeah. at some point people are like, bro, it's, it's August, it's September, you're wearing a hoodie, like what's, what's going on? And so it's yeah. hard to cover up stuff like that. And so I had two good friends of mine who actually went to the counselors and reported it. And the counselor called me in, called my mom up there. And I was so mad. I was like, those aren't my real friends. They ratted me out. Uh-huh. And, you know, this is. But they cared about they you. They cared about me, yeah. right? Obviously, now I see that. Yeah. Now I'm like, wow, those were actually my true friends. All those other friends who knew I was doing that and didn't say anything, like those weren't friends. Yeah. Now I can see it, but at the time I was so upset because I got in trouble. I got uh-huh. in a lot of trouble, and of course, then my mom's really concerned, and uh, and I I would think looking back, I'm like, man, like that should have been my my ticket out. That should have been my opportunity to say, yeah, mom, like things aren't okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I need to talk to someone or I'm really struggling. So you didn't seek therapy? Not right away. Okay. Okay. So I, uh, okay, mom, fine. I won't do that. And, you know, she grounded me, whatever. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and you, like, I, I kind of made some promises like that, but then I didn't come clean about like my struggles with pornography. And then- at about that same age, um, we were at like a, a party, a quinceanera or something like that, and I discovered alcohol. 
And people can go back and forth about whether alcoholism and addiction is hereditary or genetic or is it learned behavior and blah, blah, blah. Like, I really don't know. All I know is the very first time I drank, it did something for me. Like, I was a 12 or 13-year-old little girl, and uh-huh. I remember drinking until I couldn't drink anymore. So it wasn't just like, ooh, a sip of alcohol, uh-huh. okay, I'm yeah. done. Uh, it was, I'm going to keep drinking until I can't. And I wow. remember at some point, I was looking at myself in the mirror, and I'm staring at myself, and for the first time, I felt okay. And I remember looking at myself and thinking that, like being uh-huh. like, Wow, like like I feel okay. Like I don't feel broken. I don't feel like a screw up. I don't feel uh, like the pain. And I, I felt okay. And I remember even smiling and looking at myself in the mirror. And that was the beginning of a very of, of a lifelong addiction with alcohol at that point because it was just it did something for me like on a deep and profound level. 